three of Big Monday. The Big West, the host in a non-conference game as the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State face the New Mexico State Aggies. In number three from the Pan American Center in Las Cruces, New Mexico. John Saunders along with Clark Kellogg and it is tough to go to Las Cruces. 19th straight they've won at home. Well, this is a team that's right on the verge of cracking into the top 25. So before the end of the season, I'd expect this New Mexico State team to be in the top 25. Yeah, somehow Neil McCarthy gets it done year after year. He reloads with junior college players, and they're always exciting. We'll get back with that one in just a moment. We should also remind you, coming up at halftime, we will have scores and highlights from other games. Here on Big Monday, we'll look back at the Big East and the Big 8 as well. James Dockery leads New Mexico State. It's coming up next. Welcome now to the Pan American Center in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where this evening on Game 3 of Big Monday, we have East Tennessee State with a record of 5-7 and 10-1 and and New Mexico State. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is Marcus Johnson. We have two of the winningest programs in college basketball the last four years tonight. East Tennessee State in that time has averaged 24 wins a season. New Mexico State, 25. And Marcus, both programs really play a similar style. Yeah, both teams are extremely up-tempo, big-time up-tempo, as they like to call it. Both teams like to run. They like to press. They like to duck. You know, we're going to see some exciting basketball, probably a lot of turnovers, but, hey, it should be fun. Well, the guy who emulates the style best for East Tennessee State is... Trezell Silvers. He is a 6'5 slasher. A slasher extraordinaire. He scored 30 points in his first game against Wright State. But Trezell has kind of gotten away from the things he does best. He fancies himself more as an outside shooter now. The coaching staff wants him to take the ball to the hoop and take it hard. Well, a the guy they say may be matching him dunk for dunk for New Mexico State is a 6'5 a player, 6'8 player in his own right. His name is James Hickory Dunkery Dockery, and he's good. Well, James Dockery's biggest asset, or I should say his longest asset, are his arms. An incredible wingspan allows him to play much bigger. Last week, over three games, he averaged just under 19 points and nine rebounds. He was named the Big West Player of the Week. Well, he is their 6'8 Mr. Inside, but their 6'8 Mr. Outside is Darren Jackson, and he's a really good long-range shooter. All right, now, Pierce, you got to get with it. It's DJ Jackson now. It's cool to go by the initials, but DJ can really put it up from the outside. He leads the team at three-point shot and three-point attempts. Just an outstanding shooter. Now, he broke some by J.C., held by a former pretty good player of his own, a guy by the name of J.R. Ryder. All right, we've got the Southern Conference and the Big West Conference. It's East Tennessee State and New Mexico State. We'll have the starting lineups coming your way next. The Pan American Center in Las Cruces has the eighth longest win streak in college basketball. The Aggies are going for their 20th in a row at home tonight against East Tennessee State. Let's now check out the starting lineup for the Buccaneers. They're five and seven on the year. They really need a solid game from Robert Doggett, a natural two guard who's forced to play the point. Herman is the three point gun, averaging 14 points per game. Their coach is in his fourth year, the former assistant to Les Robinson, Alan LaForce, 75 wins, now 76 after winning on Saturday at East Tennessee State. The five Aggies, LaForce will see you tonight. Quick, very athletic, point guard Keith Johnson takes over for last year's superstar, Sam Crawford. Johnson, Walker, and Elvey are all from Chicago, and they said that's one reason their defense is so much better. And their coach, he has won more games than any coach in the history of New Mexico State, Neil McCarthy. He passed Lou Henson earlier this season and now has 180 wins in his nine years in Las Cruces. Well, here we go. James Dock, 6'8", will jump center against six foot nine inch Tony Patterson. And Dockery wins the tap and controls it at center court. Keith Johnson is the point of the team, and he is a supreme penetrator. Kicks it off low. Selby has it knocked away. It is claimed by New Mexico State, and racing in and scoring beautifully is Rodney Walker. Number five from East Tennessee State, Tony Patterson did a good job defensively of blocking the first shot, but did not get there in time for the second shot. Patterson just rejects the dunk attempt by Selby. The loose change is picked up and put in on a good second effort this time Patterson can't get to it commits the foul good play for Walker and both these teams have really been struggling from the foul line this year and Walker shows it right away missing the three point play racing down the floor East Tennessee State and this is Patterson he struggles with it loses it out of bounds and it will be the Aggies basketball but let's see 
Our officials tonight are Charlie Range, Jim Stupin, and Richie Ballesteros. Stupin comes over and says, wait a second. <laughs> and Range says, uh-uh, it was Patterson who last touched it. And Alan LaForce can't believe it. He knew he would see three Big West officials, but these are three of the very best in Charlie, Jim, and Richie. He's Tennessee State in the man-to-man -man defense. Now, we expect him to see some, expect him to play some zone tonight. New Mexico State, not a great three-point shooting basket. The steal. Jeff Herman takes it all the way and is fouled as he took it up. Fouled by Darren Jackson. And this happens quite a lot. Uh, Darren Jackson right here, DJ Jackson, just throws it away. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like that Fred Brown pass uh, he threw against uh, Georgetown, uh, against North Carolina a few years back. But uh, number 23, Jeff Herman is right there for the steal. And DJ, it looks like almost an intentional foul. He has the right hand right in his back, swaps at the ball with the left. Yeah, that Fred Brown you talked about resulted in an NCAA championship for North Carolina, the first for Dean Smith before he got number two last year. And here he is again. Both these teams struggle from the line. 55% for East Tennessee State, 55% for New Mexico State. They make one of two. It's a 2-1 Ags lead. And you see the full court pressure. East Tennessee State, they're trying to, again, play up tempo basketball. They feel that's going to help them in their conference, the Southern Conference, where everybody plays up and down to the fast pace. Keith Johnson beats the 10-second violation by two seconds, and then we have a foul out on the wing as Keith Johnson tried for the penetration. Now, we were wondering if this kind of played into the hands of New Mexico State, just, just kind of matching them up-tempo for up-tempo. But, again, the coaching staff, their main emphasis is on their Southern Conference tournament. The winner, the winner gets an automatic berth into the NCAA tournament. So, you know, they, they want to win this game, but they don't want to alter their style. Tennessee Chattanooga was a preseason pick to win the Southern Conference, but right behind them was East Tennessee State. What a rugged schedule they had early. Selby trying to tip it in. Patterson wins it, and gets a foul from Rodney Walker in the process. That is his first and the team's second. And there's Neil McCarthy in his 19th year. 380 wins for the gentleman from California. And New Mexico State, their best offense at times is just to throw it up on the glass and go and get it. They average over 20 offensive rebounds a game. <laughs> right, best offense being the missed shot. Yeah, exactly. Forget about the half-court game, just put it on the iron. And a nice runner that goes in by Frizzell Silvers, a 6'5 junior. We told you about him at the outset. He's averaging 15 points per game. And Silvers will cover D.J. Jackson. Silvers really their best defender. He's better than three steals per contest. He really play the lanes. Johnny Selby turned it over. That is one of many times this year, Marcus, that he has been called for a traveling violation. What happens, Steve, is that he uses that move in the Chicago Summer League all summer. It's never called, you know, they rarely call uh, traveling violations on the NBA level. And if he didn't, didn't call it in the Summer League, he got used to doing it. And now he's getting called for it almost every time on the collegiate level. Man, can he play? Play for Sonny Lennon, Sonny Cox at Martin Luther King High School in Chicago. That great power in the Midwest, Keith Johnson. I also heard your comment about the Chicago players and defense. Uh, what, you don't think we play defense on the West Coast? <laughs> <laughs> I think What's that. interesting <laughs> is that people are talking about New Mexico State playing better defense than they did a year ago, and they were excellent last year. There's Walker knocking it almost out of bounds, picked up by East Tennessee State. And, man, they are frustrating every shot by the Buccaneers so far. Keith Johnson takes it up and in. And four, three Aggies. Keith Johnson does a smart thing. Nobody stops the penetration, so what does he do? Take it to the cup himself. But to finish your story about the defense, they asked Rod Walker why the defense is better, and he said, easy, we got guys from Chicago this year. Silvers misses. Rebound controlled by Selvey. And this was important because the coach of East Tennessee State, Alan LaForce, said his keys to winning was we can't turn the ball over. We've got to cut down on the second shots. We must play smart and very hard. New Mexico State this year is plus seven in rebounding, and East Tennessee State is minus four. You're talking about turnovers. New Mexico State forced 29 turnovers against Cal State Fullerton in a victory the other night. So they, they can definitely harass you into some errors. Beating their opponents by 19 per game. Silvers controls Jackson. 
with great range, looking for the shot, throws it low to Selby, and there's that NBA move. <laughs> he got pies, man, but he didn't put it to the floor yet. He's dragging that pivot foot. I mean, he makes the move with his back to the basket and just slides the pivot foot three or four inches. And again, in college, they look at that a lot closer than they do on the NBA level. Phil Powell comes in the game for East Tennessee State. Trying to hit a streak against Frizzell Silvers along the baseline and just throws it right out of bounds. The one area again that must get better is from that man, Robert Donkett. He is a number two playing out of position. Yeah, it's tough. It's a different mentality. You have to know how to run the team, be a general out there, and as a two guard, you're basically a shooter looking to get yourself off offensively. Johnson got inside again. He is fouled and will be at the free throw line for two shots. New Mexico State doing a good job of running their half-court offense. D.J. Jackson on the wing. Johnson does a good job of cutting off the high pick to the basket. And just takes the straw to the basket. Now, he's not known as a shoot. main job is to penetrate and set up other players, but he will score when the opportunity presents itself. He's averaging just under eight points a game. And Jeff Herman has to take a seat with his second foul. Herman, their top three-point shooter, at 37 percent this year and Keith Johnson misses the first it's just the Aggies by one four three another one of those Chicago products played high school ball with Johnny Selvey at the King High School they were number one in the country in 1990 perfect 33 and 0. Selvey with the offensive rebound can't put it back up and in and it is controlled by the Buccaneers and there's the trap the pressure in the backcourt by New Mexico State Racing along the baseline was Doggett. He is fouled. And it looks like the person will go against Johnny Selvin. That will be his first. And the fourth team foul. Both teams with four team fouls to start his game. Very active beginning. Corey Johnson in the game. He fades and scores. Corey Johnson, Corey Johnson, one of the great scorers in high school basketball last year. Co-Mr. Basketball in Tennessee, where he averaged 40 points per game. Had an outstanding high school career. His freshman year, 25. His sophomore year, 31. 36 as a junior. Then, toward the as you mentioned, yeah, he can put it in the basket, Corey Johnson. But he's a guy who's about five feet eight inches tall. And you want him to play a point, which means give it up. And in high school, how often do you think he gave it up? <laughs> Not very much uh, scoring that many points. But his ball handling skills really aren't adequate at this point. Enough to play the point guard position on the collegiate level. Darren Jackson, tough shot. James Jockery's there to stick it back. <laughs> hickory, hickory, Doc, as you call it in the pregame. Does a good job of crashing off at the board. Selby with the steal. Here comes Johnson. He almost turned it over. Again, New Mexico State attacking the glass, getting offensive rebound. And Johnny Selby travels for his third time in the game's first four minutes. It is 6-5, New Mexico State. Rival LSU, a high-scoring, high-intensity shootout. Roll, tie, roll. <laughs> yeah, how about that game? They kept the score down, and they beat them. Silver's trying to back his way in. Corey Johnson comes out, and Keith Johnson defends him right away. Corey will take that three-pointer and miss too long. It's picked back up by Doggett, and he misses. Again, the rebound battle is won by New Mexico State. They have outboarded East Tennessee State 7-3 so far. Ball out of bounds to New Mexico State there. Keith Johnson, again, does a good job of getting in the middle. And New Mexico State, their players, their program, to just fill the wing as quickly as possible, get down court as quickly as possible. Johnson will get them the ball in a position to score more, more often than not. Well, they get it in. And they get it to Paul Jarrett. He fires from three-point range and scores. And New Mexico State has their biggest lead, 9-5. Down the floor, Corey Johnson, and he is fouled right along the baseline as he tried to go up on Johnny Selby and Selby muscled him out and that's Johnny's second foul. <laughs> Actually, the ref is calling it a tripping foul. Johnny Selby with three traveling violations now a tripping foul. His feet aren't being very good to him during this basketball game. <laughs> Scores from around college basketball, San Diego State winning and UC Santa Barbara. Boy, they are pounding Utah State. Big West Conference on Big Monday. we got a great showcase for you next week with New Mexico State traveling to Las Vegas to take on the Running Rebels.
saw Rolly Massimino's son, Tommy Massimino, here. He is scouting this game. And Corey Johnson makes the foul shots, cuts the lead to three. You'll see pressure from the Buccaneers, and Keith Johnson will break it immediately. He goes low, and right there is Walker to get two more home. And the Mexico State looks to fast break out of their press offense, if you can believe that. They want to push it up in a hurry and attack, attack, attack. New Mexico State with the steal again. Walker's being tied up by Dog, and now it's knocked out of bounds by Corey Johnson. New Mexico State are very aggressive in breaking the press. What they do, they inbound the ball, and then the wing players just fly down the court. Watch a run down the court as Keith Johnson, again, has a lot of experience in the area. He's a very good passer, especially at finding the open man underneath the basket. Neil McCarthy, he really likes his ball club. Last year's team won 26 games. But he said this one could be even better. Walker from three-point range misses. He is now 0 for 14 this year. <laughs> we talked about that. Just put it up from the outside, and then go run it down. Walker with the long three-point jump shot. There's Keith Johnson to run down the rebound, but stepped out of bounds. Thomas Wyatt in the game, and he's one of the top defenders. He comes up with a steal. Gets it low to Walker, who loses it, and it's picked up by Corey Johnson. Boy, is anything easy for East Tennessee State? Not right now. Silvers hits the three and cuts the lead to two. Travell Silvers with five points in this game. Yeah, he's got a great three-point shoot around 20%, which is not good, but he can knock down the three once in a row. Keith Johnson taking it inside for the dunk by Hickory Dunkery Jackery. Oh! Travell Silvers comes back and says, take that. Now that's two in a row. Now we talked about him at the outset, saying how the coaching staff wanted him to take it to the basket, but if he keeps shooting threes like that, they might change their minds. Well, we've got a fast-paced game right now, and it is 15 to 12. Aggies by three with 13.20 to go in the first half. And again, the pressure. Silvers wants to shoot again. It's stripped by Dockery out of bounds. And Travell turned right around and looked at James and said, good block, good block, and it was. That's all he could say. In New Mexico State, we talked about the strength, rebounding, and defense. They're forcing 26 turnovers a game. 13 of those are steals. They've held opponents under 50%. Nine of their 11 games, they're averaging four blocks per game. That was number one. And they don't concede the inbound pass. They do a good job of denying and making it very difficult for their opponents to inbound balls underneath their own basket. Corey Johnson, big-time shooter in high school, but he's got to prove in the college ranks now. Oh, he traveled. Corey Johnson was looking at his dribble, and as he put his head up, he noticed Silver's in on the corner, but by that time, he had already taken his hop and his skip. You know, we're talking about the defense of New Mexico, New Mexico State, as we take a look at Dwayne Bradbury, you know, they play a very aggressive zone. When you think of zone, you usually think of a passive defense, but they attack out of their zone defense. Give McCoy in the game now. Bradbury, you saw him. Jarrett's in the game. He fires from three-point range in a short, and the rebound goes to Silvers. East Tennessee State hanging right in there, down by just three points. They have had a very aggressive schedule this year. That's why they've lost seven games. And Jarrett is fouled by East Tennessee State. Justin McClellan, who just checked in. Here's McClellan putting the ball on the floor, going left, and just kind of gets caught up in the air. No place to go. Jarrett right there for the steal. And again, it happens a lot. Once a you turn the ball over, there's a tendency to try and want to get it back right away, which more times than not leads to a foul. And here's Mr. Jarrett. The coaches were talking about him being an Indiana, North Carolina type player, good defender, good outside shooter, very good passer, just a complete basketball player, and he has helped them. There's three more years left. They rarely get junior college players who come in and have three years of eligibility, but he broke his ankle his first year in the Ju Juco ranks. 
and he had was a healthy last year. As a tattoo of the, the, the Aggie mascot, Crystal Pete, tattooed on his calf. <laughs> he said he did it just for the heck of it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how he's going to feel about that in 20 years. East Tennessee State comes down and misses. Junior Floyd with the miss. Corey Johnson, though, with the dribble. Trying to find an opening. And there's a steal by White, but he steps out of bounds. You see the goggles that he is wearing. Thomas Wyatt hurt his eye in the last game against Cal State Fullerton. Needed four stitches in his right eyelid. So that's why he's wearing those uh, rather funky goggles. <laughs> Said he had all the stitches taken out but one. He doesn't like the goggles. Said that it kind of alters the lighting in this building. And it's affected his shooting. But it is a rather funky look, as you mentioned. Again, they double a man <laughs> as soon as he goes outside. Shot clock is down to 10, so they fire from three-point range and miss Robert Doggett. They cannot hit the three-pointers. It's really going to be difficult to beat New Mexico State. Wyatt with the jump hook doesn't go. Wyatt gets it back and just throws it up, and it is knocked out of bounds, and the basketball belongs to the Buccaneers with 11.29 to go here in the first half. New Mexico State playing well, but leading by just five over East Tennessee State. I mean, best is tremendous. James Forrest is comparing to so many great NBA players. Yeah, like James Forrest, he's a big guy that has a, just a, a two-guard shooting touch. It's a real powerful player, but looking at the shot selection, it's East Tennessee State, two out of six from two-point range, two out of six from three-point range. New Mexico State not taking as many threes, but they're doing just five from two-point range. Been able to get that break going and get a lot of quick shots. Corey Johnson gets it over to Robert Doggett, and immediately he is doubled. Somebody's got to be open. Look, look, look at the quickness of this defense. Yeah. As soon as the ball rotates, they're there. Skip McCoy. In and out with a three-pointer, and it's knocked out of bounds by Darren Jackson. It will be East Tennessee State basketball. The Skip McCoy, it, it kind of played himself out of the rotation, but had a good game, 12 points against Cal State Fullerton the other night. The coaching staff likes his tenacity on defense. Oh, they found Silvers, but again, it's ripped away, and here comes New Mexico State again, running the floor. McCoy swatted out of bounds by... Junior Floyd, but a whistle and a foul, and it will go against Floyd, and that is his first. Now here you see Dwayne Bradbury and Skip McCoy kind of begging for the ball, but McCoy has one thing in mind, and that's taking it to the basket. Does a good job of drawing the foul, drawing the contact, and getting to the free throw line. You know, you hate to be critical, but I was looking. He's a point guard, Skip McCoy. He has played 76 minutes this year. Do you know how many assists he has? up two. <laughs> you can see on that play, he's very reluctant to give up the rock. It's like, get out of my way, Bradbury. This is mine. Oh, he was funny at practice today. He went up for a dunk and decided he wasn't going to go in, so he just held onto the basketball and came down. And Neil McCarthy said, hey, Cyclones can't jump. And the next time he got it, he dunked and turned around and smiled at his coach. Right. He is a transfer from Iowa State. That's why he calls him a Cyclone. Bradbury with the good defense. Corey Johnson turns it over with the traveling violation. And it just does not seem like East Tennessee State is comfortable at all offensively. Well, New Mexico State is a big reason for that. They don't allow you to be comfortable. They, they make you make decisions when you don't want to. That time, East Tennessee State would have left to have set up their offense, but New Mexico State would not allow that. They made them have to put the ball on the floor. They are so active, and they run a lot of that matchup. 1-1-3 one, one, defense, and it rotates. It's almost like an amoeba. Wherever the ball is, the defense is. Bradbury threw it off the hand of James Dockery, and that's a loss to the Buccaneers. So too many turnovers are a reason that East Tennessee State has stayed in this game. That is seven turnovers now for New Mexico State. East Tennessee State isn't helping themselves at all. They've got ten. Speaking of turnovers, uh, Johnny Selby is back in the game. He has three of his own already with the traveling violations. Well, Darrell Jones checks back in for East Tennessee State. He started again. He's playing with a, a little bit of an ankle problem. Corey Johnson gets him the basketball. Out deep to Silvers. He's double again. 
Silvers missing the front of the iron. Rebound Dockery. Bradbury searches the floor and finds McCoy. Gets it low. Selby turned to the inside and almost traveled again. It is knocked out of bounds as Doggett. Had he been able to complete that pass, it would have been an easy two points for Justin McClellan. To watch New Mexico State defense on its inbound play. They were not allowed to get in easily. Silvers now has seven points as he drops in two more. Bradbury and DJ Jackson, Skip McCoy, James Dockery, and Johnny Selby on the floor for New Mexico State. And East Tennessee State are falling back in the zone. They're going to make New Mexico State shoot some perimeter jump shots. Do you like the zone as far as rebounding goes? Jackson from three-point range, will he? He might change him back to the man yeah. real quickly. But the zone allows you to have rebounders already in position, but then it also allows the offensive team to find some scenes and creep in there for some easy tap in. Corey Johnson from NBA range drops his first, his second three-pointer of the game. The alley -oop from Bradbury was intended for James Dockery, but that is the eighth turnover for the Aggies. And right now, with a three, Neil McCarthy can see East Tennessee State get within one point. And Bradbury's like, I thought you had long arms, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that long. Not Mr. Fantastic. Get off Silver's missing. They try and stick it back in inside, but a whistle and a foul is called against the Aggies. And it goes against D.J. Jackson. And that will be personal foul number two. He talked about the two winningest programs in college basketball prior to East Tennessee State starting this year. They were in the top ten, but they've gone five and seven this year. But they still have a 74 percentage winning ratio in the last five years. New Mexico State, well, they have had marvelous numbers. 26 wins last year. Neil McCarthy off to 10 and one record this year. And that can pose a problem. The fans in Johnson City, where East Tennessee State is located, they have high expectations. There's a little uh, grumblings among the natives this year. Corey Johnson missing the three. Up high for the rebound was Junior Floyd. And on the floor, Silvers. And we will have a held ball situation. And it will be East Tennessee State's basketball. With 8.30 to go here in the first half, Buccaneers down by just four. Yeah, the action is getting pretty physical underneath as the jump shot is missed by Johnson, but uh, their bodies, oh, that's a tough ball right there. And then watch the contact with Trezell Silvers and Dockery right there. Just really took his nose off with his head on that play. Doggett tries to connect in the bank. Dockery high for the rebound. Well, he has improved his game so dramatically from a year ago. Keith Johnson back in. Hawking him down defensively is Robert Doggett. And East Tennessee State will drop to the zone again. Walker missing again from three-point range. Selby went for the rebound, but he loses it out of bounds. 7.56 remaining first half. A good one here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. With the Aggies up on the Buccaneers. If I was Michael Jordan in 1982, NC would have beaten Georgetown not by one, but by two! 15 seconds. Jordan's open. But to the horror of 65,000 screaming fans, he jumps, takes two giant steps back, and pops the three. Two, one. Yes! North Carolina wins it all! By two! Of course, there was no three-point line at the time. But that's what college basketball's all about, taking chances. It was East Tennessee State's crowning moment. First round of the 1992 NCAA Tournament. The 14th seeded Buccaneers led by Keith Mr. Jennings and a young freshman by the name of Frizzell Silver. Shock number three, Arizona Lute Olsen. Final score, 87 to 80. And the coach, of course, was Alan LaForce. He took over for Les Robinson. It was his second year. They went 24 and 7 that year. Lost in the second round to a very great Michigan team, 102 to 90. But they still talk about that game against the Wildcats in Johnson City. Uh, the biggest game in the history of this Buccaneer program. East Tennessee State stays in the zone. He'll come out on Jared this time because he's hit a couple of threes. And Johnson tried to. 
find a seam inside of Thomas Wyatt and Richie Ballesteros. The official says no way. It went straight through out of bounds. Alan LaForce, coach of East Tennessee State, has got to be happy with the, the zone so far. They've given up one three-pointer, but for the most part, New Mexico State has not, have not attacked it well. Curry Johnson almost traveled again. Look how quickly that defense gets there. I thought Corey Johnson had an open three. But Wyatt just flashed in his face. Shot clock is down to nine. Junior Floyd has got to think about it. Silver with three seconds left misses. Rebounding is Keith Johnson. He'll take it all the way, lay it up, and no good. But Keith tried to get his own rebound, and a foul was called. And it will go against East Tennessee State. Now Keith Johnson at times penetrates a bit too deeply. That time he had two guys running the wings and basically try to take him take it to the basket himself. And sometimes he gets caught up in the air, but he was bailed out that time by the foul call. He's got a smile on his face. What a player. 51% foul shooter. All their starters shoot under 60% with the exception of DJ Jackson. He is at 70. Wyatt almost comes up with another steal. That's two times he's been right near the scores table and almost run into a, a guy doing the assists. Well, they've been successful in the matchup, so they'll stay in it. There's a skip to Corey Johnson. Doggett is denied, and he'll run the offense again, but they only have 11 seconds on that shot clock. So way outside goes Junior Floyd, missing badly. Johnson tries for the miss. Instead, coming away is Keith Johnson. Mexico State, they want to spread their players and good shooters around the three-point arc, have their guards and penetrators attack the gaps, hope to draw the defense and pitch out to the open shooters. Marcus, we have been stuck on 21-17 for a long time, haven't we? <laughs> Both teams are having a bit of difficulty putting the ball into the basket. Six seconds left in the shot clock, and East Tennessee State comes away with a steal. Yeah, turnovers has been a large part of the reason. Both teams not doing a good job of taking care of the ball, but again, the defenses on both ends of the court are extremely aggressive. I'll tell you what, though. I know East Tennessee ball over like 11, 12 times in this game, but if they play with this kind of intensity and defensive concentration in the Southern Conference, they are going to be a low. Yeah, that's the reason for the tough schedule. I mean, they played some very tough basketball teams this year, losing to Xavier, Michigan State twice, Marquette, Virginia Tech, Rhode Island, but they feel like in their conference tournament, that's going to make them a better team. Here's Jarrett, another three, missing badly this time. Floyd rebounds. Now, Coach LaForce was saying, if we play in well in March, then the schedule is good for us. Right. But if we've lost our confidence, then it was bad. <laughs> There's a steal by Walker. And he scores, and there's a chance for three. And I hate to sound redundant, but how many times do you see it? The guy that commits the turnover, in that case, Corey Johnson, comes back to commit the personal foul and just trying to try to make up for something he, done, he did wrong. But there's no way in the world he's going to block the shot of Rodney Walker. He's 6'4", jumps extremely well. Corey Johnson, just uh, a very generous 5 feet 8 inches tall, I'd say. <laughs> and he picks up his first foul. Five feet eight with elevator shoes on. <laughs> and Walker has himself a three-point play. Back in the game is Robert Doggett for East Tennessee State. It took us three and a half minutes to get off of 21-17. It results in a Rodney Walker three-point play. And the Aggies back in front by seven. 24-17 at the 5-14 mark. And East Tennessee State has been so quiet. They've gone almost four minutes without a score. Shaheed Perkins in the game, a 6'3 junior from Wilmington, Delaware. And firing from three-point range and scoring is Junior Floyd. Big yeah, you can score against this New Mexico, New Mexico State zone with good ball movement, good ball reversal. Paul Jarrett with the catch and score on the feed from Rodney Walker. He's got seven now. But Silver slashes through 12 points for Trezell. Another alley-oop lob. 
Rodney Walker can't catch anything but iron. And the Buccaneers have a chance to close it to one on a three-point play. Doggett. Too hard. Jarrett rebounding. Jarrett takes another three-pointer. This time off the side of the iron. Paul Jarrett's not bashful about shooting those long jumpers, is he? Not at all. He came in hitting at 36 percent this year, but he's taken four. The guy you normally see inside. Silver's missing. Deep rebound to East Tennessee State, so they'll get a new 35 second clock. Silver's covered by Wyatt. Missing the three, Shahid Perkins. Yeah, East Tennessee State shoots a lot of three points shots a game, 30 to 25 a game, and uh, they make about eight of those. So they're not a great three point shooting team, but they believe in quality instead of quantity. Excuse me, quantity instead of quality. Well, Rodney Walker finally does lose it, and here comes Silver. Trezell Silvers with the dunk cuts New Mexico State's lead to just two at the 3.05 mark of this first half. Trezell with a little showtime, Rodney rubbing his eye, like trying to put the emphasis, more emphasis on the foul to the ref. Hey, look, I can't see right now. Yeah. That almost looked like a guy, you know, going for the fumble who never just jumps on the football. Another traveling call. And East Tennessee State can tie it up with a two, and Neil McCarthy's really upset. He may have to go back to his bench. It's 26-24, Aggies. East Tennessee State down by two and with the basketball with 2.51 remaining first half. We talked about New Mexico State's excellent defense, but how about East Tennessee State forcing 21 turnovers this year? Yeah, that's defense and a head butt thrown in. Now, Rodney Walker, he can't see right now. He's blinded. East Tennessee State takes advantage of it. They swarm him. They get it to Travel Trezell Silvers and watch the bump off the chest, Doug. There's the bump off the chest. There's the backwards reverse. Trezell Silvers doing it all. Now, what happens if you dunk it off your head and it goes back through the rim and out? No bucket. I, I've, I saw Charles Barkley. What do about that? the uh, Connecticut game today? Did you see that one? No, I didn't. No, but I, I saw Charles Barkley do it once on a dunk, reverse dunk, hit off his head, went back through the hoop, no basket, <laughs> and a lot of embarrassment. Just think if Charles had hair, the tank points away. Never would have made it through the hoop. This is Doggett. He's being controlled by Skip McCoy. Stripped again. Here come the Aggies. They've got a four on three. McCoy's going to take it to the hoop, and he loses it out of bounds, but it was last touched by Justin McClellan. And you see why McCoy has but one assist. <laughs> Even in that situation, he's like a small man looking to try and score against the Giants inside. That's like Alan LaForce said. He said... There's a theme to the Aggies. It's attack, 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 and that's true for Skip McCoy. Down low, Dockeray. He is fouled. Well, coming up at halftime on the Delta Fawcett Report, we've got a look at number two, Duke. What they did tonight, other top 25 highlights, and Clark Kellogg will have analysis of the entire evening. What went on in college basketball in this first month in 1994? There is Alan LaForce. He's got to be happy with the way his team has played. It's, they were real concerned about restoring the confidence in this team. They've lost to some good teams, as, as we mentioned earlier. And he was really second-guessing himself on the schedule. And he thought this team was going to be a lot stronger than what they were early on. But uh, the coaching staff feels with, with hard work and, and time spent in practice that they'll develop and come together. Just hopefully it won't be sometime in May or you know, June. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Big West Player of the Week comes up with two free throws, and the Aggies are back in front by four. Ball movement, ball reversal. That's the way to beat the aggressive trapping defense of New Mexico State. You will get an open shot. Rebounding his own shot and trying to take it up and in was Shahid Perkins. And Perkins will be at the foul line. 
Well, next week on Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, we've got Georgetown and Seton Hall to tip things off at 7.30, 4.30 in the West Coast. And then look at that, the great Sunflower State shootout, the Kansas State Wildcats and the number three Kansas Jayhawks, victorious this evening over Oklahoma, followed by a great one in the Big West Conference. New Mexico State and UNLV, the two teams expected to knock it out for the championship in this league. Great big Monday triple header right here on EN. 155 to play here in the first half. And Shaheed Perkins making the first foul shot, cutting the lead to three, misses the second, rebounding his Dockery. He has seven rebounds already. Bradbury McCoy, Wyatt Dockery, and DJ Jackson on the floor for New Mexico State. Dockery gets it, turns, misses. Beautiful rebound by Trezell Silvers as he blocked out nicely. Yeah, that was a case where the zone really helped the rebounding. Again, you have your rebounders already positioned close to the basket. And at the line for two shots is Justin McClellan. I'm not sure if it was Dockery or D.J. Jackson who got the foul. It will go against D.J. Jackson, and that means he has three. So Paul Jarrett must come in. But this ball club, you, you can't say they're ever in foul trouble because they play 11 players. Play a lot of guys, and, and nobody really gets big-time minutes, which, you know, poses the question, do you allow your guys to really get into a flow? But uh, the answer is they're 10-1, and one, so don't ask the question. Neil McCarthy, when he took over this program, he inherited a 7-20 and 20 team in his first year. He won 18 games, and he has never looked back. He has just turned out outstanding season after outstanding season. It's a three-point game, 28-25, as both teams very, very poor from the foul line. They're defending Dockery well on the low block. Bradbury throws it up, missing. Dockery tried to stick it back up and in. But the deep rebound goes out to Skip McCoy. Jarrett for three. He's missed his last three three-pointers. And a whistle and a violation away from the shot in the paint going against Justin McClellan. And with 10 fouls now being called on East Tennessee State, Thomas White will be at the foul line for the first time tonight. Thomas Wyatt has shed the goggles. And he yeah. has one stitch remaining in that tear duct. He took the other three out. He said that he was instructed by the doctors to wear them, but you know, he, just, he felt so uncomfortable. Now he's going against doctor's orders, I guess, and he's going to go without them. Well, you told me that uh, he didn't like wearing them. And I guess this proves it. And he didn't score with them on, and he has two points with them off. So I think they're going to stay off. It's 30 to 25 inside a minute to play in the first half. Turning it over again as East Tennessee State. Here come the Aggies up the floor. Bradbury to Dockery, and he blows it. And a blocking foul is called against the Buccaneers as Dockery hammered it right into the lane and into the teeth of the defense. Just great backflow on the defensive hustle by New Mexico State. McCoy gets a hand on the ball. Now here they come the other way. Get it to the middle. Get it to your point guard. Dwayne Bradbury does a good job of looking up the defender left and feeding Dockery. Now Dockery just kind of loses the handle on the ball while trying to avoid the offensive foul and picks up the foul of his own. Gets a chance at two free throws. I almost thought he traveled before he... Uh... He did, but I think they've called so many on Johnny Selby that they... <laughs> <laughs> so it's a traveling amnesty out there for the last 43 seconds. 52% <laughs> foul shooter is James Dockery. He makes one of two, and he gives the Aggies a six-point lead with 43 seconds left. This is an important possession for East Tennessee State going to the locker room because New Mexico State has been an excellent second-half team this year. There's the double. There's the turnover. And winning it back is East Tennessee State and just barely. Here goes Silvers. Good pass inside, but missing the dunk, but accepting the foul is Phil Powell. And the personal. And we have the meeting at the summit between Powell and James Dockery. Both guys really elevate high. Dockery, you know, he didn't care about the foul. He was not going to allow that dunk shot to be made. The first foul on James Dockery. 
Will Powell, a 65 percent foul shooter, one of the best on the team. There's one. from Raleigh, North Carolina, and misses the second one. Dockery rebounds. Aggies by five, and everybody breaks the press, and Wyatt can't hold on. Go back to the goggles, Thomas. <laughs> well, he's kind of like the, uh, the receiver in football who runs and starts to run before he has the ball securely in his hands. He wanted to duck that so badly for national television that he didn't wait till he gets the ball, got the ball. Look at these guys. They steal everything. Bradbury is fouled. He'll be at the line for two shots. And you know East Tennessee State is saying, take care of the basketball. Go for the last second shot. Instead, the Aggies are going to have a chance at two. Yeah, but Dwayne Bradbury, he's very hard for Looked like he beat his elbow and his back. Had some back problems a couple of weeks ago. Here he is. He's going to go for the kind of the Michael Jordan little scoop you do layup to the other side and watch the fall. Just lands awful hard. But uh, this young man out of Los Angeles High School, Man Yards, and let him watch the elbow. The elbow, he tries to brace the fall with the right arm and just basically comes down on the elbow, and you can tell he's in pain. Dwayne Bradbury at the line. Dwayne Bradbury at the free throw line. Let's see if he was kind of elevated to legendary status in Los Angeles. I mean, the kids all think uh, he's just going to be a great big-time player. Had a tremendous J.C. career, but had some trouble adjusting here. He, he told me that uh, he has to share the ball more, and he's not used to that. He's used to being the main guy offensively. Doggett trying to skip it, almost turning it over. Here's a last-second shot that goes in by Shahid Perkins, a big three by Perkins. 33-29, our score at halftime. Alan LaForce has to feel good about the score. And Neil McCarthy's Aggie lead is just four. Well, this is the one thing you hate to give up. It's an unconsented three-point shot. Shaheed Perkins and watch the net. <laughs> Nothing but, baby. New Mexico State 33, East Tennessee State 29. Now let's go to John Saunders for the Delta Fawcett halftime report. Welcome back to Las Cruces, New Mexico, where East Tennessee State, surprisingly within four of New Mexico State, 33-29. And we say surprisingly because the one thing that Alan LaForce said was we cannot turn the ball over. 15 turnovers first half, and yet they're down by four. They have to feel comfortable. Well, he's lucky that uh, New Mexico State had 15 turnovers of their own, so they kind of cancel each other out. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some first half highlights. If there's one guy that was really needed, it was Trezell Silvers, and did he play a beautiful first half. Yeah, good ball movement, good penetration, and you're going to get a good open look at the basket that time. Giselle Silver's a man that the coaching staff doesn't want to shoot a lot of threes, knocks down the three. And of course, for New Mexico State, when they get the ball in the break, they just break you down. Yeah, Rodney Walker showing some nice soft hands. That was a pretty difficult pass to handle. He was able to pull it in and finish it off with two points. Here's your first half stats. 33% field goal shooting for East Tennessee State, 36 for New Mexico State, so the shooting has not been that strong. New Mexico is a standing rebounding team, but the turnovers, 30 combined turnovers. Well, it has not been an artistic masterpiece, uh, but both teams, again, are running up and down the court. They're doing a lot of pressing, and this type of style of game, you're going to see a lot of turnovers. And the leading scorer. Silvers with 14 points. He played a brilliant first half. 6 of 12 from the floor. Corey Johnson at 6 on a pair of three-pointers. Rodney Walker with 9 for New Mexico State. He is trying for double figures for his fourth straight game. And Doc Renato with 7 points with 9 rebounds as well. Jared a couple of three-pointers. And they're saying hello to ESPN from Las Cruces, New Mexico, where it's about 38 degrees outside, but sizzling inside. I guess that must be the at the Polar Bear Club at the Grizzly Bear Club. Or something down here in, in, in New Mexico. But uh, DJ Jackson, he's the one guy that's missing from the scoring column. He's our leading scorer, 12 points a game. He's had the ankle injuries, kind of slowed him down, but he's struggling from the outside. And now he's picked up three fouls, so he's kind of in double jeopardy at this point. Well, here in the second half, New Mexico State will go with Dockery. Paul Jarrett in for DJ Jackson. Johnny Selby. Rodney Walker and Keith Johnson. And East Tennessee State will counter with Frizzell Silvers, Robert Doggett, Tony Patterson, Jeff Herman, Darrell Jones. 
And East Tennessee State likes that zone defense. They have to feel that it worked for their, in their favor in the first half. They're going to stay with it. Good defense again by the Buccaneers. Walker comes up with a loose ball, though. Gets it to Dockery, and he scores. He's got nine. Coming off a 27-point outing against Cal State Fullerton. Now, this defense of New Mexico State, it wears you down. A lot of their games have been relatively close at halftime, but they have a way of just pulling away at halftime just from the fatigue factor. There's the double again, and they almost turn it over. Patterson in the corner, 15 of the shot. Selvey and Jarrett with brilliant defense. But the possession arrow says it will still be East Tennessee State's basketball. Big time defense by Johnny Selvey, the strong young man out of Chicago, Illinois. You're going to see the pass inside to Giselle Silva. Just watch it get up there and just glove it. That's what you call a glove, Steve. Just getting the hand all over the ball. Meantime, Silvers comes right back to score. And it's a four point game again at 35 31. Silvers now at 16 points. He has been the one shining light for East Tennessee State this evening. Everybody defending well, but offensively, he has been their go-to guy the entire evening. Dockery missing. Patterson rebounding. Fumbles the ball to Jeff Herman, who had a quick two fouls in the first half, had to come out. But he had a three-game stretch in December where he averaged 24 points a game. They need his outside shooting. Well, your zone is working if you can turn Dockery into an outside jump shooter. His game is underneath, inside, pounding the boards. That's a walk against Keith Johnson. That is now 16 turnovers on New Mexico State. They're, they're, they're prone to the turnover, but they'll force so many themselves. Their defense has forced an average of 26 turnovers per year, but right now Neil McCarthy wants to call his junior point guard over to visit with him. Got a great future, really likes him. And they'll send in Dwayne Bradbury. <laughs> Not a bad option. <laughs> Not a bad option at all. Bradbury, again, just a tremendous J.C. player last year at San Jacinto J.C. Average over uh, 20 points a game, 13 and a half assists to lead the state of California. But this is a different level. There's the trap. Here comes Doggett. <laughs> 17 in the shot clock. Patterson turns and fires, can't score, it's short. Rebounding is Bradbury. Every single shot is contested. The thing about Patterson, he has a tendency to disappear in games. He's had some, some good ones against Xavier. He was seven for seven. Then he goes stretches where you don't know he's on the court. And that's kind of been the case in this basketball game. Oh, they are so balanced. For 11 players deep. They won 10 games. Their only loss this year was to the University of Texas at El Paso. That game on the road, Bramberg backing in and then fading away. And he has given the Yankees a six-point lead at 17.05. That's four points now for Bradbury. Yeah, it wasn't pretty, but he'll take it. Patterson taking it up strong, this time scoring. And you can kind of sense that the coaching staff talked to Tony Patterson at halftime and told him he had to step up his, up his game offensively, look to get the ball in the basket. Bradbury and Walker in the backcourt. Dockery, Selby, and Jarrett. Dockery missing, and here comes East Tennessee State. They're within four. They can make it two. In the zone of East Tennessee State, they want to force Mexico State to make some decisions that they're not used to making. That jump shot by Dockery, that was one of those. Finally, an open three, but they miss off the back of the iron. No. Once again, New Mexico State trying to force a pass inside. Neil McCarthy, he likes the enthusiasm. He wants a little more accuracy. Well, New Mexico State, they're used to being able to beat their opponents down the floor. They get a lot of easy baskets sending Dockery right down the middle of the court. He beats the opposing defender down for layups. But this East Tennessee State basketball team, they're very good in defensive transition. They've been able to get back and get a hand on the ball. I'm telling you what. This basketball game has been so rough and tough. If it was a book, it'd be like Guadalcanal Diary. I mean, just dig into the trenches and watch the bombs come fading. Uh, East Tennessee State, their second straight open jump shot, and Jeff Herman knocks this one down. He has three points, and we've got a two-point game at 37-35. Persistence has really paid off for East Tennessee State. I mean, they just have shown no quit, even when New Mexico State has gone off to a very good run. 
Patterson with the steal and a chance to tie. A three could give him the lead. Doggett misses the three, rebounding Walker, and he gives it up to Patterson. But the turnover, and here is Silvers again, tying the game at 37. Neil McCarthy can't be happy with what he's seeing out there. He's got players fighting for the ball. He's got non-shooter shooting jump shots. This crowd is really quiet. They are stunned. New Mexico State's first time on Big Monday. They always play well. Bradbury gets it out to Jarrett. Shot clock at 10. Here goes Walker. He pumps. Misses no. Rebounding East Tennessee State. They can take the lead here. Inside 15 minutes to go. Silvers has been brilliant. He's got the ball. Silvers with 18 points. Played a good basketball game. But East Tennessee State, they're attacking the zone properly. They've got good spacing players all over the court. Moving the ball, ball reversal, ball moving to get an open shot. And Patterson went up to try and knock it down. He is fouled at the free throw line to try and give his club a lead for the first time since early in this game. Foul on Jarrett was his first. New Mexico State is always great at home. I mean, 19 game home winning streak, eighth longest in the nation. All time and time, so they in 81 percent of their games. Look what they've done to Neil McCarthy, and they have this year been an excellent second half team and so many times they have been up by just four or five points and yet they've uh, outscored the opposition this year by 19 points per game <laughs> yep. my dad had to show up <laughs> and I asked him to stay at home <laughs> but New Mexico State again they rely on superior conditioning you know to play this type of defense and run this type of up-tempo offense you have to practice that way and uh, that gets your guys in great shape, which has been a lot of the reasons they've been able to pull away in the second half. Other teams just have not been in the type of condition that they are in. Oh, well, East Tennessee State has their first lead. 38-37. Down low, Selvey struggles with the ball, turns it over. East Tennessee State up by one, 38-37 at the 14-07 mark of this game. In the lane, Patterson. Again, a much more aggressive Tony Patterson. And East Tennessee State is up by three. Oh, he's not disappearing in this half, the second half. He's really playing good, aggressive basketball. He can get the ball in the paint area, gets their zone. Now he's making good, positive moves offensively once he gets it. Jackson misses. Rebounding is East Tennessee State. And Doggett says, let's slow it up. They've gone over the half-court game. UTEP beat them by really slowing it down. They slowed it down, and they just kind of stand around near the uh, half-court line and pass it around until 15 seconds remained, and then they would take it to the hoop, and it almost slowed down New Mexico State as well. And right now, the Aggies are struggling offensively, and their defense has not been as sharp as the first half. They find themselves down by three points on Big Monday. Well, East Tennessee State has 40 in this game. New Mexico State has 37. And it will be the Buccaneers basketball. Alan LaForce, before the game, said, we have to play smart and hard. I think they played that almost throughout. Not nearly as smart as they could have early stages of the first half. But they also said, we can't turn the ball over, and they have to must cut down on the second shots. Scoring here in the second half, East Tennessee State up by seven. Yeah, uh, East Tennessee State in their zone defense. They're making New Mexico State find an outside jump shooter. Now, D.J. Jackson is back in the game. He's going to have to step, have to step up and knock down some long jump shots. They double Patterson and he turns it over. That's the first turnover by East Tennessee State in the second half. Two New Mexico State's five and a blocking foul is called against Silvers, and that is his second foul. Dwayne Bradbury gets the ball on the wing, and he has one thing in mind: is trying to get to the basket. Silvers that time did not have good positioning, a blocking, blocking foul call against him. Jackson is doubled and it's knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. The two reasons they've been outscored, 11 to four in the second half. 
Offensive rebounding. They've outboarded New Mexico State 3 nothing, And here's a steal by East Tennessee State. And turnovers. And turnovers the other reason. Dog had tried to come up with the basketball, but it is knocked out of bounds. And with 13 minutes to go, East Tennessee State will have the ball with a three-point lead. And this is no fluke. East Tennessee State, they're pretty good at forcing turnovers themselves. They force about 22 a game, so this is not unusual for them in their defense. They need to swing it a little more quickly, and there's a jump. Held ball situation. Possession arrow points New Mexico State's way. You know, if they can reverse the ball quickly, they can beat that matchup zone. But Neil McCarthy has a couple of defenses uh, in, in his matchup. He doesn't allow for ball reversal. And, and, and that was the case there where they double teamed the wing guy, denied the reversal man, and were able to tie him up. Now East Tennessee State has gone to the zone. And New Mexico State with another turnover. Yeah, they're going for the, 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 the highlight plays instead of just playing good, solid basketball. Dogged with the ball. He's joined in the backcourt with Jeff Herman. <laughs> An offensive foul is called against Doggett. That is his third foul. The point guard for East Tennessee State, Robert Doggett, with three fouls at the 12-20 mark of this game. Robert Doggett kind of getting into the macho man mentality. He wants the defenders off of him, so he's going to give him a little help. Swings the elbow. Not a lot of contact, but just the act of swinging the elbow gets the foul. Keith Johnson back in, joins Bradbury. Bradbury wanted to take the three. A violation away from the ball, and it will go against East Tennessee State. Another elbowing foul this time. Tony Patterson, big man in the middle. He stuck James Dockery right in the chest. And Tony Patterson picks up his third personal in this game. So Patterson with three, Herman with three, and Alan LaForce will talk things over with a three-point lead. Here on Big Monday, it is East Tennessee State leading New Mexico State 30 to 27, 12-09 to play in the game. And East Tennessee State has gone 2-3 zone. Jackson will try and shoot him out of it. It's in and out with a three. Patterson high for the rebound. Boy, has New Mexico State been quiet. They have scored four points in the first eight minutes of the second half. They led 33-29 at the break. And not only have they gone cold from the outside, not being able to knock down any jumpers, but East Tennessee State, they're really doing a good job defensive rebounding, allowing one shot at the offensive end. Patterson misses the stick back. And here comes New Mexico State. Bradbury to Dockery! I'll tell you, now, I'm a bit confused. Early in the season, they were calling a lot of technicals for hanging on the rim for plays a lot less obvious than that. And it uh, just seems like the officials have gotten some kind of edict from somewhere to, to lighten up a bit. But here's Patterson with the jumper. Now, the fast break starts with the good rebound. The outlet to your point guard, Bradbury, who does the right thing, gets it in the middle, penetrates, finds the open James Dockery underneath, and there's just a slight swing of rule on the old rim there. Oh, what a beautiful lean-in shot by Silvers. Every time they've needed a big basket in this game, Marcus, number 21 prevented to him. Now, he didn't just quiet the crowd. He told him to shut the heck up with that <laughs> jump shot. <laughs> shut up. Mexico State scores their first bucket in a long time. There's a foul. That's the second time that Patterson is, is getting caught for elbowing James Docker. Now, he's just taking the idea of being a bit physical, just, just, just taking it a bit too far. I mean, he wants to play physical inside. It's his fourth foul. He's got to play smarter. You got three fouls. You don't, you don't do the obvious elbow right in front of the referee. It does you nothing but gets you a seat right next to Alan LaForce on the bench. And Patterson has some words to the officials as he leaves, and Alan LaForce talks to him along the sideline as Tony picks up his fourth foul. So in to replace him now is Phil Powell. Bradbury for three. Misses long. And a foul will be called against New Mexico State. It's four on DJ Jackson now. Again, being smart. You got three fouls. You're going for the offensive rebound. Any close contact, the foul's going to be called against you. He's got to be a little bit more cautious than that. 
Well, he's running out of three-point shooters because Darren Jackson, one of the top three-point shooters in the Big West Conference with four fouls, and Corey Rogers is ill. He is not playing this evening in street clothes, and he is one of the top three-point shooters in the team as well. Wyatt rebounds the miss. East Tennessee State leading by three. Keith Johnson looking for the penetration. Travels with the basketball. How many times have we seen that tonight? And that is 20-plus turnovers in this game for New Mexico State. And Coach Neil McCarthy counseling his player on the merits of maintaining your pivot foot when you get inside like that. Well, you have to pat him on the back for the job that he has done through the years. I mean, every year they have tremendous turnover. Six starters left from last year, six, at least 15 games. And yet they come out and win 10 of 11. And here they are at the halfway mark of this ball game, second half. Down by just three points against a very fine East Tennessee State club who's playing polished. And J.C. Players, players aren't the easiest guys in the world to sell on playing tough D and sharing the basketball. A lot of these guys are big-time scorers in their own right. Rodney Walker. He scores. Walker's first bucket in the second half. He's out, has 11 points. Now, East Tennessee State, they're going to miss the presence of Tony Patterson inside. He's on the bench at four fouls, but he was very active offensively in the second half. You know, I thought they might give the ball back to Silvers. As East Tennessee State is fortunate that it goes out of bounds, but Travell Silvers has played such a great game. And that man, every time they have needed the big basket, they've gotten it. Let's see if they call his number. Target gets into the backcourt. Silvers is off on his left side. This is Silvers. Into the corner she goes to Corey Johnson. Junior Floyd missing. New Mexico State with a three on one. Walker. 13 points. Do they count the basket? No, no. Offensive foul called on Rodney Walker. He had not released it yet. Let's see. And here's the penetration. Keith Johnson. Here's the kick. Let's see. Is he set? Peter said has good position before Rodney Walker gets airborne. I think it's a good call by Charlie Range. 42-41. East Tennessee State with the one-point edge. Doggett into the corner. Turned down by Junior Floyd. Doggett misses terribly from three-point range. And there was not even a hand in his face. Yeah, but now East Tennessee State has got the wrong man shooting. As you mentioned, Trazell Silvers has played an outstanding game. He's been effective inside and out. They've got to put the major emphasis in their offense on him, Trazell Silvers. Get the ball in his hands let him shoot the ball. D.J. Jackson remains in the game with eight and a half minutes left, even though he has four fouls. Here's James Doctor. Oh, man. Nice post-up move. 13 for the Doc. Now the crowd, they're getting into this basketball game, and Trudeau Silver just trying to quiet them again. Silvers, short, Walker rebounds. New Mexico State will slow it down as East Tennessee State gets back quickly on defense. Wyatt takes it inside and is fouled. Junior Floyd is furious. But as soon as he saw the glare from the official, he just clapped his hands and said, yeah, it was me. He's got three. Uh, we don't have the greatest angle in the world, but it did look like a foul from here. Looks like a good block. You know, just minimal contact with the body against Junior Floyd. Did a good job as, as Wyatt goes up high. He goes up there to meet him and meet the challenge. So Justin McClellan comes in for Junior Floyd. Junior Floyd, the... Uh, Younger cousin of Sleepy Floyd, who plays for the San Antonio Spurs and comes from a great basketball town, Gastonia, North Carolina. Meantime, Thomas Wyatt goes to the foul line and drops in a free throw. Both played down at Hunter Huss High School and had a lot of success down there. Four of four from the line for Thomas Wyatt. And the Aggies back in front by three, 45 to 42. 
Here's tonight's storyline. East Tennessee State has not shot the three-pointers well. Five for 24. Silvers, though, has kept them in the game. 18 points. New Mexico State with 24 turnovers. And that has allowed the Buccaneers to stay in this game. But the East Tennessee State defense has forced so many of the Dockery's played another marvelous game. Yeah, big time. James Dockery doing a good job. 13 points, 10 rebounds. And he's been the guy that has put New Mexico State back in this basketball game. A couple of nice shots inside some good defense on the interior. And let's see if East Tennessee State goes to that man number 21, Frizzell Silvers, a preseason all-conference candidate, first team. Average 14 points per game last year. Corey Johnson comes off the bench, fires up a three, misses, gets it back. This time, two-pointer is good, and it's a one-point game. <laughs> Talk about not being bashful. This is just a freshman. Misses his initial three-pointer after just checking in the game. Gets it right back from 15 feet and says, hey, you know, I, I miss one, I'm not going to miss again. <laughs> I like his attitude. He's got a great He's attitude. 18 years got old. Got the shooter's mentality. <laughs> and the coach says, calls his number, and he says, you bet. Down low, a foul is called against Justin McClellan. That's his third, and Keith Johnson will go to the foul line. Great job by DJ Jackson of hustling that. That ball is, the, is at the other end of the court. You don't want to save it, but it's at its own end, so he does. Gets it to Keith Johnson, and you know, they wanted a jump ball foul, but McClellan had nothing but arm. Here's Keith Johnson. He's only shooting 51% of the year, and he's now 0 for 4. Like this that. is a very desperate free throw shooting team, and if anything can cost him the title this year, it would be that. Yeah, this is uh, you know, no excuse, but free throw shooting in college basketball has been down for the last couple of years, and we talked to Coach McCarthy at practice. It just seems like guys today don't concentrate as much in practice and on their own on free throw shooting. Well, we've got a great one here in Las Cruces, New Mexico, 46-44. Walker with the steal! He almost threw it away as cutting in was Shahid Perkins and almost had the steal. It just a careless pass initially on the part of Shahid Perkins, the 6'3 junior. And uh, there's Walker with the aggressive defense, able to pull it. Now, here's a careless pass by Walker that Shahid Perkins, I mean, you know, he should have had the interception. It should have been two turnovers on that play. One for each team. Steal by East Tennessee State. Again, it's their star Silvers. And Doggett with the layup missing. Silvers puts it back in. Ties the game at 46. Silvers has 20 points, almost half of his team's 46. Dockery wants the ball low. He's well defended. Another three misses, and a foul will be called in the paint. Zell Silvers is doing a great job at both ends of the floor here on defense. Anticipates the pass to the wing, does the right thing, gets it to the open man, and hey, dog it, you know, misses the wide open layup, but there's our guy, Zell Silvers, there for the putback. Where would they be without this guy? He had 30 against Wright State <laughs> earlier this year. He's got 20 this evening. Where would they be down by about oh, 16 or 18 <laughs> points right now? 56% free throw shooting by New Mexico State. I'll tell you what, you look at those, and you, Chris Farley of Saturday Night Live and ESPN promo fame shoots better free throws than this. But Keith Johnson knocks this one down to give the Aggies a one-point lead. Pressure time, he's got them both. Five points for Keith Johnson. Aggies lead by two. Less than six and a half to go. Now New Mexico State has gone to a man-to-man -man defense. They've gotten out of that 1-1-3 zone. They're going to pressure all over the court. And we've got an offensive foul against D.J. Jackson. That's number five. He's gone. <laughs> he's out of here. That was number 44, D.J. Jackson. Their leading score... Their top three-point shooter, D.J. Jackson, is out of the game. Now, here they are in the paint, and uh, as Tony Patterson tries to get to the low box on the left side, D.J. just kind of body checks him to the floor. Now, that foul is okay if you're in hockey, but uh, just doesn't cut it in basketball. And guess who had to defend him? <laughs> Travell Silvers, a guy averaging 12 and a half points per game, gets only three. And Travell Silvers has given him 20 points. 
He has been the star of the night. The Buccaneer from Johnson City, Tennessee. This is Silvers. Misses short. Patterson trying for the rebound. Instead, it's pulled down by Bradbury. And it's thrown away off the hands of Rodney Walker. Rodney Walker has got to really be kicking himself as Bradbury does a good job of finding him on the wing and hits him in the wrong place. And that hand right there, Walker can't hold on to him. You can see the pained expression on his face as he blows an opportunity for two points. Marcus, 26 turnovers <laughs> for New Mexico State. 20 for East Tennessee State. Nothing's been easy. Look at this. They almost and knocked down Coach LaForce. 26 and 20 and counting. We've still got over five minutes left in this game. New Mexico State with a two-point lead inside six minutes to go. But Alan LaForce was hoping his team would use a game like this for them to come together. I mean, the chemistry has not been there all season. 11 out of their 13 players are in their second year or less of actual basketball experience. They've struggled. They're hoping to put it together before the Southern Conference really got underway. And this game has really been a good game for them. Robert Doggett gives it off to Silvers. He slashes in and scores. 22 for Doggett for Silvers to tie the game. And that's his game. Putting it on the floor, taking it to the basket. You can't take it all the way for the dunk or the layup. Pull up for the little short jump shot. And I beg your pardon, that was 24 points now for Travell Silvers. He held D.J. Jackson to three. Yeah, this is getting a little bit too ugly for Coach Neil McCarthy out there. He wants to talk about it. Neil McCarthy talks with guard Rodney Walker on the bench. We're tied at 48. East Tennessee State tied with New Mexico State at 48 with five minutes and 21 seconds remaining on this big Monday Classic. And of course, East Tennessee State, no stranger to winning basketball, 88-89, they win 20, 27 in 89-90, 28-90 in 91, 24 again two years ago. That was the year they stuck Arizona in the NCAA tournament. Four times they've gone to the tournament. And Alan LaForce, he was an assistant to Les Robinson early. And in the last four years, he's been with this ball club. Here's a reset situation. Two timeouts for each. 17 fouls for East Tennessee State. So New Mexico State shoots one plus the penalty. If there's a held ball situation, it will be Buccaneers basketball. 5-18 and counting. New Mexico State with it. Keith Johnson looking for the penetration, but it's denied by Doggett's dogged defense. East Tennessee State again in that stingy 2-3 zone. They're going to give up the long jumpers from the baseline. Johnson kicks it off right at the right moment, but was there a charge? Shot clock violation. Oh. Did not get the shot. They called a timeout on their last possession. The shot clock does not reset on timeouts. Although it was good penetration by Keith Johnson and a good kick to James Dockery, Dockery would have been better served to shoot a quick layup. This is a case of him jumping too high and hanging too long as the horn sounded right before he threw that one down. So still tied at 48. Basketball belongs to East Tennessee State. Inside of five minutes to go. Keith Johnson applying the defense on Robert Doggett. He is playing with four fouls. Tony Patterson back in the game. He also has four fouls. New Mexico State again going with the straight man-to-man -man pressure defense. They've gotten out of that 1-1-3 one, one, zone that they used almost exclusively for the entire game. They switched over Thomas Wyatt on Travell Silvers. He's their best defender. Doggett takes it in as it's swatted away. He wants the goaltend. And that's a situation where you want a guy like Johnny Selby just to leave the ball alone. I mean, that was pretty close. It didn't look like goaltending, but you don't want to give the officials any ideas. Especially Reggie Ballesteros said it was no goaltend. It was simply a foul. And in the act of shooting, and Robert Doggett will go to the foul line, a 55% foul shooter. Look, he's been shut out tonight. has his first point of the game and he has given East Tennessee State a one point lead with 426 to go. So Doggett has done a pretty decent job of directing the offense for East Tennessee State tonight. He's gotten away from, from thinking as a scorer to more as a floor general. 
and as a free throw maker. Skip McCoy comes back in for New Mexico State, taking over for Dwayne Bradbury. McCoy, the transfer from Iowa State. He's their backup, backup point guard, but still plays plenty of minutes. He had a brilliant game in there. Come from behind victory over New Mexico in double overtime. Hit a couple of big threes. Oh, they're going to need his outside shooting. Dockery from just inside the three-point arc. Give it to the Aggies a 50-50 tie with East Tennessee State. Even though Dockery has improved his outside shooting and extended his range this year, you still have to hold your breath every time he pulls up when the game is this close. Jeff Herman again misses from three-point range. Rebounding New Mexico State. Inside four minutes to go. McCoy. He hits. Skip McCoy. I may have only one assist, but I can do this, baby. I can shoot the three with range and with confidence. the crowd is back in it. McCoy will defend Doggett. Silver struggling in the lane. Picks it off at the last moment, but it's swatted out of bounds. A good play on the part of the offensive guys. Silver's penetrating, good ball handling, getting there, finds the open Patterson underneath, and then a great defensive job by Wyatt just to squat. It looked like a, some contact inside, but the thing to remember. And oh, they're calling oh, there foul was a foul. Wyatt. Okay. Okay. It, you it, know, it, if it, Thomas it, goes straight up, Marcus, and just blocks the shot. Right. Yeah, he, he did the, the big swing oh, movement, and, uh, and it, it looked like a lot of contact on the play. I didn't know if the foul was called initially, but uh, Wyatt, as you mentioned, he just got up there and just pinned the ball. He could have probably got a, a jump ball call. You're almost asking for a foul when you swat at the basketball. I mean, you can't keep trouble from visiting, but you don't want to offer it a chair, and that's what he was doing. And Patterson at the line. You see the difficulties that he faces. Time out. He's Tennessee State there, second. Three oh one left in this basketball game. The Aggies fifty three. East Tennessee State fifty one. New Mexico State historically not a good free throw shooting team. Only fifty six percent of the season, but seventy one percent tonight and seventy one percent against Cal State Fullerton. But what makes this so surprising? And this is Neil McCarthy's 1965 master's thesis at Sacramento State College. Look at it. An examination of results of one method of teaching free throw shooting form. Now, here's a guy <laughs> who got a master's degree in it. And I asked him, I said, why are they shooting 56%? Neil said, hey, they're shooting 67 lately, so we're getting better. Yeah, you, know, you notice his thesis said one method of examining. <laughs> it's obviously not the right method. You got to go to another method. Maybe the uh, Brent Berry from Oregon State style of underhanded, you know, just try something else. Uh, but they've done a good job tonight of knocking down their free throws. And, you know, they, <laughs> he was a very a good better player time. in his day. And there is Alan LaForce, both of them wiping their brow to sweat away. <laughs> it's been an intense game. It's, you know, it's, it's been sloppy at times, and it's kind of game to the make a coach age about 10 years inside three minutes to go and New Mexico State with the lead and with the basketball if there is a hell ball situation it belongs to East Tennessee State Thomas Wyatt along the baseline shot clock down to 15 they got it low Dockery scores he's fouled <laughs> Good pass by Thomas Wyatt. And just something happened out front here. Thomas Wyatt was going to give five to Dwayne Bradbury and like that took his head off in the process. But here's Wyatt penetrates to his right, finds a wide open Dockery underneath, and the defender just tries to hold on for the ride. Well, this might be the stretch that New Mexico State needs to pull away. They have done this all year long, a record of 10 and 1. 
Dockery finishes the three-point play, and he has been the huge reason why New Mexico State has pulled away. His inside play, his rebounding has been outstanding. 56-51 Aggies at the two-and-a-half-minute mark. Almost a steal, getting it as Silvers. Throws it inside, and another whistle and a foul. This time against Johnny Selby. Foul number four, Johnny Selby is third personal. Johnny Selvey out of King High School in Chicago. Now, now, Thomas Wyatt, he almost had the steal for the breakaway dunk. But uh, Silvers got the ball back, made a good pass to McClellan. And there's big Johnny Selvey inside saying, no, you're not getting anything easy, young Mr. McClellan. But East Tennessee State, they're high on this kid at the free throw line. Justin McClellan, they feel like he has the potential to become their best player because of his overall skills as an offensive and defensive player. And here comes the trouble at the free throw line again, Marcus. I mean, late in the game, I mean, clubs are going to foul you if you can't make, make your foot throws. He's only a 55% foul shooter. He makes one of two. Cuts the lead to four. Now, with two minutes and about 20 seconds, East Tennessee State, they need about two or three good defensive stops and scoring down at the other end becomes imperative for them because they're down by four at this point. Wyatt puts up the three. It's too long. And it's knocked away, but Selby with a big rebound return, and he calls timeout. Let's see if they work the clock a little bit when we come back. There's two minutes and one second remaining in this game. It's New Mexico State 56, East Tennessee State 52, 201 left. This is next week's Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Georgetown, all that experience against Seton Hall at 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 West Coast, followed by the great matchup of the Midwest. The Kansas State Wildcats and number three, Kansas University, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 the West Coast, followed by New Mexico State. A chance to see the Aggies again as they go to Las Vegas to take on Roley Massimino's running Rebels. That's midnight Eastern, 9 o'clock here on the West Coast. Timeout situation as we reset it. One for each ball club. Both teams are in the penalty situation, but two more, and they'll be shooting on automatic two. And East Tennessee State will have the basketball if there is a held ball situation. The Buccaneers will go zone, and that means New Mexico State will work a little bit off the clock. Now, 20 seconds. Well, that's the difference between the two zones. East Tennessee State zone is a passive zone. They don't really put a lot of pressure on the basketball. And that could hurt them in this situation with just a little bit of time left. James Dockery missing. Battle for the basketball is won by Doggett. A minute 35 to go. Now we get into some specialty plays. This is the first time we've seen Daryl Jones with the high pickup top. They're trying to free up Trezell Silvers in the corner. They want Doggett to penetrate to his left, force the defensive player to switch on him and then try and hit a wide, excuse me, uh, Silvers in the corner. Patterson throws it away. He thought his man was going to pick and roll. Instead, he just turned his back to the basket and looked like he was going to get in rebound position. But now New Mexico State realizes that Silvers has been the man. Thomas Wyatt just doing a good job of sticking with him. They forced Patterson to become the playmaker. And at 6'9", he's not doing a very good job of it. Well, on further review of that play, I just think it was a bad pass. Yeah, a terrible pass. Wyatt gets it inside Bradbury. Selby falls down. And East Tennessee State has a held ball situation. That means they will have the basketball with 45 seconds to go and down by four points. And we've got Giselle Silvers lying by the free throw line. He looks like he's in a lot of pain. We take a look at the play. I don't know what's wrong with Silvers, but here's the play. Here's Bradbury with the penetration. Now he's going to throw a nice bailout pass to Selvey at the last second. Selvey just can't get his feet together, gets knocked down, and then the mad scramble for the basketball. Well, Silvers, as we saw that replay, it looked like he got hit either in the nose or right above the nose, but he's in quite a bit of pain. And I'm not even sure if it was his own teammate who hit him. But it was before the ball. It was right on the nose. 
And here he is, the star player for the Buccaneers who has had a brilliant night, not only offensively with the 24 points you saw, but holding D.J. Jackson to only three when he was defending him. And there's a lot of blood uh, coming out of that nose on the floor area, so he's going to have to come out of the game, especially if they can't get the bleeding stopped. Of course, with the HIV situation and that rule in college basketball, he must come out until the bleeding does stop. And he must come out for at least a uh, one tick of the clock. Let's see if we can pick it up on the replay and check out number 32 Bradbury and 21 Silvers the man who gets hurt and watch the left elbow of Bradbury as he penetrates and goes to the basket. Oh yeah. He <laughs> looks like he got cheek and nose. Yeah it looks like more cheek than nose but uh, I guess it didn't take much to start the the of blood for coming but yeah he caught he caught a hard shot and uh, goes down like a like a boxer just catching a right hook on the chin and uh, you know that's the type of injury where I mean it's painful it hurts a lot initially but it should not keep him from playing in this basketball game the last 45 seconds again if they can stop the bleeding. Well, he is coming out of the game but for how long we are not sure Trezell is going over to sit down he does not even go to the huddle as they have lost their junior leader from Clinchco Virginia and it looks like Corey Johnson will come in for him Corey Johnson is their brilliant three point shooter who was co Mr. Basketball and set a national high school record last year with two hundred and thirty two three pointers. He wears number 20. Again with a three guard look. And they struggle with the ball. Corey Johnson in the backcourt. Breaks it off the side. This is Doggett missing the three. Rebounding New Mexico State. And it's on the floor. And it's kicked out of bounds. And it's East Tennessee State's basketball with 23 seconds left. And this time, Doggett goes down hard. <laughs> this has been a very, very rough and tumble basketball game we've seen a lot of players injured a lot of players knocked down on the floor about as physical as you can get we've got a time out of the floor with 23 seconds to go Alan LaForce will talk things over with his troops Neil McCarthy talks things over with his Aggies but let's take a look at that that real struggle on the floor as Doggett. We're going to see James Dockery come into the picture aggressively going for the loose ball and Doggett just takes a spill and uh, he's a little shift shaken up on the play but like Trezell Silvers who I feel will be back in this game that's not enough of an injury to keep him from playing the final 23 seconds. Neil McCarthy well he has said let's see uh, inherited this ball club nine years ago we have to play great defense and he turned it around incorporating that matchup zone which is really terrific and Alan LaForce taking over for Les Robinson who's now at Newton, North Carolina State well he has East Tennessee State who has taken on one of the more aggressive schedules certainly the most aggressive schedule in the Southern Conference well tomorrow we have a Super Tuesday for you on ESPN. Damon Bailey, who has been the star for the Hoosiers. He was the high school player of the year in the state of Indiana four years ago. And he has the Hoosiers at number 11 in the nation going into Iowa City to take on the Hawkeyes. That's tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern time to be followed by 9.30's game with LSU at number four, Arkansas. They're deep, talented, and very fast, and Corliss Williamson leads them. Arkansas was number one, but after falling to Alabama, they are now at number four. Another Super Tuesday on ESPN. Will New Mexico State make it 20 in a row at the Pan American Center? The eighth best winning streak in college basketball? Well, the Indiana Hoosiers top the charge at 36, followed by Kentucky at 30. And here tonight, standing at number 19, East Tennessee State with the basketball. And you got the shooter Corey Johnson, Trezell Silvers, the key man, all back in the game. Missing the three. A battle for the basketball. It's won by East Tennessee State. Silvers back in the game, fires from three, missing. New Mexico State has it with five seconds left. 
A foul is called against the Buccaneers. They had two very good looks for Alan LaForce. Couldn't get the shots to fall. And it looks like the Aggies will win tonight. Yeah, the Aggies should win this game as we take a look at Dwayne Bradbury and Coach Neil McCarthy kind of wiping the sweat away. We dodged one tonight, but uh, a good effort by East Tennessee State. I mean, they played just great defense, forced New Mexico State into numerous turnovers, approaching 30 turnovers, and uh, we saw a fine player in Trezell Silvers, just a, a real, real good player, both inside and out, and, and a very tough defensive player, as D.J. Jackson can attest to. Dwayne Bradbury. Hits the free throw. New Mexico State, despite the troubles this year from the foul line, has been very good in this game's last 10 minutes. I mean, they have had tremendous comebacks. They were behind by nine points against New Mexico at Albuquerque, Marcus. Yeah, being down. Nine points with 43 seconds to go, and they won the game. Yeah, being down uh, by a four or five like in this game means nothing to them. Burroughs can't hit it. Mexico State has a victory for Neil McCarthy. Silvers was brilliant tonight with 24. You've been watching Big Monday presented by Bud Light. The final score, 58-52. For Marcus Johnson, I'm Steve Fiziak. Good night, everybody, from Las Cruces, New Mexico.